In this video I will introduce the concept of linear time invariant systems. This is a video recorded for the course Introduction to Mobile Networks and Services at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology. When we work with systems, it's all about having a black box that takes an input signal and produces an output signal. And system models for boxes like this is something that can be used in many different applications. In electrocommunication, the signals might be some kind of voltages or currents that is processed by a box that is providing some output. And often we write the signals, x of t and y of t, as something that is dependent on time. And the box is exactly what we call a system. It can, for example, be a function that takes the input and produces the output. And the question is, what kind of properties this function might have? In a way, the system is manipulating the signal, and it can also be viewed as a filter that filters the signals and provides us a version of it that is maybe distorted at the output. Before analyzing the system, we will take a closer look at what kind of input signals we might be interested in. One basic thing is a complex exponential. This is a function which contains a cosine and a sine with a particular frequency f. So it's cosine of 2 pi f t is the time in the real part we have that and in the imaginary part we have the sine of the same frequency. So the signal over time is looking something like this. In the real part we have the cosine, in the imaginary part we have the red sine signal here and the distance in time between two peak values on the cosine or the sine is 1 over the frequency. This is a typical kind of signal in communication, and we can use the amplitude and phase of it to convey information. But when analyzing systems, we will instead look at some other signals. The unit step function, u of t, is something that is zero before time zero and one after time zero. And then it jumps between these two values exactly at time zero. If we shift the argument of the unit step like this, u of t minus t zero, where t0 now is the time when it shifts between being 0 and 1, well then we can illustrate the function like this in terms of time. And as you can see, something abruptly changes at time t0, or at time 0 in the original definition of the unit step. If we take the derivative of that, it is called the unit impulse. And this is a function with some strange properties. In particular, it doesn't really have any value at time t0 because it jumps so abruptly here. So in a way, it is infinitely large, but in an infinitely small interval. In particular, the impulse response had a property that if you take another signal, x of t, multiply it with delta of t minus a, and take an integral from minus infinity to infinity, well then the output of this will be x at time a. So at the value of t, where we get a zero inside the impulse here, namely when t is equal to a, well then we put in a as the value of t in the x function and we get the sample of that one. And as I was saying before, the unit impulse is the derivative of the unit step function and the other way around we can get the unit step function by taking an integral from minus infinity to time t of the unit impulse function. And we often draw a unit impulse like this with an arrow at exactly the point where the unit step would have happened. So this is where the unit impulse have a value and elsewhere it is exactly zero. The unit impulse is also known as the Dirac delta function. Let us now have a look at systems. So a system in a general case is something that takes an input signal and provides an output signal. And an energy-free system is one where there is no transients in the system that is affecting the output on itself. No, it is the input that determines the output. So if the input is constant, the output is constant. And that is what we are interested in as well. The impulse response is what you get when you are sending an unit impulse into an energy-free system then you get some signal at the output, and we call this the impulse response. And it turns out that everything that is happening inside the system 
is determined entirely by this impulse response. There is one type of systems that is particularly interesting to analyze, linear time invariant or LTI systems, where linear means that the output is a scaled and time delayed version of the input. And time invariant means that the system always react in the same way, irrespective of when we are sending a particular signal. And in the remainder of this video, I will introduce these concepts in more detail and give you examples of things that are linear or nonlinear or time invariant or not. We start with the concept of a linear system. So consider a system like this. It's a box that takes an input and we let the input be called x1 of t and then we get the output y1 of t. If we send another input x2 of t, we get y2 of t as the output. And the system is linear if we can do like this. We take a linear combination, so a summation of the two input signals, multiplied with two different coefficients, a1 and a2. Then the output should be the same kind of linear combination here, a1 of y1 of t plus a2 of y2 of t. So it's a linear combination the same way of the individual outputs here that we will get if we were feeding in only one of the signals. And this should happen for any a1 and a2, any x1 and x2. Then the system is linear. In any other case, we say that the system is non-linear. Let us take an example here. So is the following system linear? It is one where we are sending an arbitrary signal x of t into the system. And then the output is x of t minus 1. So a delayed version of the input. Well, the way to figure this out is to consider two different versions of x of t. x1 of t and x2 of t. The system will then provide us with the outputs x1 of t minus 1 and x2 of t minus 1. So how do we verify if this is a linear system or not? Well, we consider an x of t which is a linear combination of x1 and x2 with some arbitrary coefficients a1 and a2. If we would send this now into a system, the output should be y of t, which is that we are taking the same input as we were having, but we delay all of the places where we have the time, t should be t minus one. So we apply this at both cases here. So a1 of x1 t minus one plus a2 x2 of t minus one. So it's these arguments here that is updated by the system. And we can now identify that x1 of t minus 1, that is y1 of t. And x2 of t minus 1, that is y2 of t. So we can rewrite the whole thing like this. And this is exactly what the definition of a linear system says. That if we take a linear combination of the input, we get a linear combination of the outputs. So this is a linear system. Here is another example. x of t is the input and the system provides us with an output which is x t squared. Is this a linear system? Well, we can check this in the same way. We consider two different signals, x1 of t, which provides us an output which is x1 squared of t. And x2 of t is another input signal, then we will get an output which is x2 of t squared. Is this a linear system? Well, we consider now a linear combination of the inputs with some arbitrary coefficients a1 and a2. If we feed this into the system, we know from the first line here that the output should be its squared. So y of t is this exact expression squared. If we now expand this square, we get the first term squared, we get the second term squared, and we get two times the product of them, this term here. So how can we verify if this is a linear system? Well, we need to have a look at, is this a linear combination of the individual output here? Is it equal to a1 times this plus a2 times this, which would be a1 of x1 squared plus a2 of x2 squared? No, this is different from what we were actually getting. We don't have the squares on the coefficients and we don't have this extra term here. So this is not the linear combination of the outputs. So it is not a linear system. It is a non-linear system. 
Then we have a time invariant system. This is a system that takes an input and provides an output. If we then consider another input signal, x1 of t, which is a shifted version of the original input signal, x of t plus tau, for some constant tau, then the system should provide us with a y1 of t, which is a equally time-shifted version of the original output signal. If this is the case for any input signal, for any t and any tau, well then the system is time invariant. Otherwise the system is called time variant or time varying. So here's an example. Is this following system time invariant? So x of t is the input and the system is providing us with y of t being x of t minus one. We can verify by saying, okay, here is my other input, x1 of t. And we provide x of t plus tau. If the system is time invariant, we should get y1 of t, which is y of t plus tau. Do we get that? Well, the true output that we are providing us with, y1 of t should be x1 of t minus one. This is what we get here if we just add the indices here. And now we are considering what x1 of t is. Well, it's this expression here. So if we are taking t and replace it with t plus tau here, we get x of t plus tau, and then we have the minus one term. So this is the actual output we are getting from the system. The, the output that we will get if we have a time invariant system is y of t plus tau in the same way like this. And if we take t plus tau and feed it into this expression here, we get t plus tau and then we once again have the minus. So yes, we have the same cases here. The true output matches with what we would get if the system is time invariant. So this is a time invariant system. Here is another example. For an arbitrary input x of t that we feed into the system, the output is cosine of two pi f of t times the input. So we are modulating it with a cosine with a particular frequency here. We can follow the same approach in order to figure out if this is a time invariant system. So we consider x1 of t, which is a shifted version in time of the input. And if it is a time invariant system, the output will be a equally time shifted version. If we send this signal into our system, the true output that we are getting according to this relationship here is y1 of t is cosine of two pi f t times x1 of t, and x1 of t is x of t plus tau. So if this was a time invariant system, the output should be y1 of t being y of t plus tau. And if we take this and feed it into the original equation here, we get two pi f t plus tau, and then x of t plus tau. And we can see that there is a mismatch over here, t and t plus tau. So this is not a time varying system because y1 of t is not equal to y t plus tau. And in general, when there is something happening inside the system that is time dependent, like this cosine here, it is not a time invariant system. We now have the following definition. A system that is both linear and time invariant is referred to as a linear time invariant or LTI system. An example of that is y of t being equal to x of t minus one. This is an LTI system as we have seen. And in general, there are many properties that LTI systems are having that we are using all the time when analyzing communication systems. So one of them is that x of t is the input, well then the output is x multiplied with the impulse response, h of t, in a type of multiplication called the convolution. And when one is going into Fourier transforms, well then if you take the Fourier transform of the input, multiply it with the Fourier transform of the impulse response called the frequency response. Then if we are multiplying them together, x sub f times h of f, we get the Fourier transform of the output signal. These are two important relationships that we will utilize a lot later in this course. Thank you very much for watching.